This is Brandon M. Crooker, and you're listening to the Apostolic Theory Podcast. Hello again, hello again. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Apostolic Theory Podcast. Apologize for my voice. Last few weeks it's been a little difficult, so I do apologize if I happen to need to take a drink of water or anything. While I'm well, while we're talking about this, talking about uh, really, really a passionate topic of mine is the name of Jesus Christ and the victory that you have through the name of Jesus Christ. Throughout history, there is a certain level of authority that comes with having a specific name or a family name or heritage that comes with a name. For instance, my family came from England as boat builders. They sailed in the northern England region with my great-great-grandfather, who married a Native American. So we're natives to the land as well. But my grandfather owned a great amount of land, so much that his name was recognized and uh, connected to his fortune. Over the years, his importance has faded to the community, but not in the hearts of his family. We carry not only his name, but we carry what his name stood for. In conversation, you can attempt uh, what's called a name drop, which is basically to use someone else's name to bring more weight to your point of view or to build your own reputation while using someone else's name. We used to ride, call it riding on the coattails, uh, making a name for yourself off of someone else's name, which is not uncommon in today's society, so much so that uh, research papers undergo peer reviews and uh, not any particular renowned single individual, but they'll use uh, their connections um, and their uh, friendships to create uh, more weight to what they have to say, to their personal opinion, uh, things of that nature. We actually saw that happen during COVID-19. A lot of these um, medical uh, mandates and things of that nature that they were trying to push were uh, similar. They were basing it off of uh, one particular individual or several particular individuals Uh, And it just obviously uh, didn't work that way um, because it just didn't work that way. (laughs) Now, this name dropping, business of name dropping to build up your own reputation and things of that nature. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about that um, and how you do have the authority and the right to name drop the name, the revealed name. Of God in heaven. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. So uh, first, I want to talk to you about David. David was a man after God's own heart. Sure, he had his um, he had his failures. He had his, his mistakes. He had his own situations in life. But, you know, we have a God that's a God, a redeeming God, a God of redemption and while David was not released necessarily from the consequences of his actions, he was released uh, in this life. He was released from the eternal consequences of his actions. That's an important thing to know. But he's a man after God's own heart. Now, before he was ever king, he was a shepherd. He tended to his father's sheep. An interesting thing, he said in the Psalms, David writes, in sin did my mother conceive me. That leads me to wonder when Samuel was there looking to anoint the next king and why Jesse didn't have David there with his other brothers. It makes me wonder if the story of David and the sin that he faced, if it was a generational curse. Uh, It's all speculation because I don't have any biblical backing to it, but it's just something for you to think about because he did say, in sin did my mother conceive me. 
But so before he was king, he was a shepherd. And he was tending to his father's sheep. And while he was tending to his father's sheep, he fought a lion and he fought a bear. Um, and there comes a day where he decides, well, his father decides, stop tending to the sheep. I want you to run some lunch out to your brothers. So he does. And he... Here's the roar of this giant. Send me a man to war. We'll see. Whoever wins will be the other servant. Okay. And David hears this. He's like, what's, what's going on here? He didn't even refer to him by his name. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of God? And then, when he's actually there, he said, well, you know what? Is there is there not a cause? Why why are none of these men here? These why are none of them willing to go face this giant? And even the king, who was above, you know, the rest of uh, like a, a whole human, a whole head above all the others, he was a, a, a he was a larger man. He was great in stature. Saul was, but. But here's a boy. Saul tries giving him his armor. He says, "No, nah, I, I haven't. I haven't tried this armor. I haven't proven this armor. I haven't. I, I don't think I could go into battle with this armor, with this sword." And so he goes with this sling and his stones, and he's facing the giant. But what does he say? The giant. Oh, I'm gonna feed you to the fowl of the air. I'm gonna tear you to pieces. He thinks it's a joke. How you send me a you send me a boy, a kid. David says, What you said to me is gonna happen to you. He says, You come to me with a spear and a sword and a shield. He says, And I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And in that moment, one stone whew, nails the head of Goliath. In Goliath Falls. Wow. He won the victory because he came to Goliath. He came to the giant in the name of the Lord of hosts. David didn't understand what he would understand the weight of what he was really saying. He was pulling the name of God and the victory and the authority and the power and pulling it from heaven to earth. Names can carry various weights, various authorities. Aside from the natural realm, there's a spiritual realm where names are used. God changed the name of several biblical figures to match his plan and purpose for their life. God called Abram. His name was Abram when he called him out of Ur of the Chaldees. He changed his name to Abraham in faith. Abraham means father of nations. He changed his name to Abraham. So Abraham would start speaking in faith his name. So he literally had to tell people, my name's Abraham. I'm the father of nations. He changed Jacob's name to Israel. Jacob meant uh, supplanter. It meant deceiver. And his name was changed to Israel. Peter, whose name was changed to Cephas, which means rock Saul. His name was changed to Paul. And today we have something so much greater than a name change. We have his name, which has all power and all authority. See, we understand that the name of Jesus is a name that the devils are subject to. 
healing takes place through. Things begin to happen through the name of Jesus. Why? Because like names on earth that carry authority, the name of Jesus carries all authority and all power. It's the name of the Lord. It's the revealed name of God. The name of Jesus, Yeshua. It remains God, my Savior. This is why we call in the name of the Lord in baptism. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We claim victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Dominion was given to man by God. They squandered it, but God restored that dominion through the man, Christ Jesus. Whew. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. none other name if you want victory and you want to be an overcomer and you need healing the bible says though whatsoever you do in word or deed do all in the name why would you do it in the name because the name that you use is where the authority comes from the power comes from the name of Jesus Christ. And it says giving thanks to God by him. Giving thanks to God by and through Jesus. By the man Christ Jesus, the man. But the name is the revealed name of God. It's the name that's above every name. All authority and all power is in the name of Jesus Christ. So think about that for a second. That's the name. That's the name. The name. So since we're talking about victory, David won victory because he came to Goliath in the name of the Lord. He didn't come in his own ability. He didn't come in his own uh, power. He didn't come in his own authority. He, because he was just a shepherd boy. He was just a kid. He didn't come in the name of Saul. He came in the name of the Lord. And he won the victory over the giant in his life. Because he was willing to come for the Lord. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, speaking of Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The glory of God the Father. Every knee bows in the name of Jesus. Of the things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Every tongue will confess. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw men unto me. If he's lifted up, if his name is exalted... where the power and the authority is. So think about this. You're facing some things in life. You're, maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're, you're considering walking away from God because of just this just the stress, the turmoil, the trouble, the trials, the tribulations, the things that you're going through. Maybe. 
want to encourage you today that you have access to the name that is above every name. There's a song that says, I speak the name of Jesus over you. I speak the name of Jesus over you. That's what the song says. But why would that song become so powerful? Why would it make that song so powerful? Is because when you speak the name of Jesus, the devil has to flee because he doesn't have authority. The writer says, Thou believe in one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and they tremble. They tremble at the name of Jesus because they understand the weight, the authority, the power that comes in the name of Jesus. They are subject to the name of Jesus. When you're under spiritual attack, you can speak the name of Jesus and you can be set free from the attack of the adversary. You can overcome your situation. And all you have to do is speak the name of Jesus. You have victory through the name of Jesus Christ. Don't hesitate. Don't be discouraged, but be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged that you have the name applied to your life as a child of God. The Bible says that his name would be called Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. The name of Jesus is all those things. You have the authority of the Father in heaven through the name of Jesus. Jesus is not just a name. Jesus is the revealed, it's the revelation of the God in heaven, which was in Christ Jesus. The Spirit of God that dwelled in the man Christ Jesus. And Jesus is that revealed name. So you apply that name to your life. You have the authority of God in your life when you use the name of Jesus. It's not a coincidence that the world uses the name of Jesus in vain, and it's probably one of the most used curse uh, words because if the adversary can get humanity to utilize a name of power and authority negatively or in a manner of cursing, he can win the war. He can win the fight of your life and your soul. But you can overcome and you can combat it by using the authority God has given you in his name. It was the name of Jesus. And this is, this is where... I feel Trinitarians have missed the mark because they believe that they're, that titles are names. The titles are not names. And so when they baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they're baptizing in titles. They're not, they, they're not baptizing in Jesus' name. Go ye tell the world, baptizing them in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. There was no question to the New Testament church of what that meant. There was no confusion. They believed in one God. They believed that Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word became flesh. Raise the mystery of God in this that God was manifest in the flesh and dwelt among us. God was manifest in the flesh. God in flesh. Jesus is the name of God. The 
the God of the Bible is Jesus Christ. And why do you have victory? Because the God that created the heavens and the earth stepped out of glory, took on the flesh of man to be the ultimate sacrifice for your sins. By his stripes, we are healed. In the name of Jesus, the adversary has to flee. In the name of Jesus, you have healing. You have re redemption, healing, protection, hope, revelation, expectation, experience. The Old Testament believers would call on the name of the Lord. They would call on Jehovah. They would call all these different names of God. This podcast is made possible because of listeners like you who are willing to bridge the gap. We now have a sponsorship program on our Anchor website in which you can become a monthly sponsor of $1 five dollars or ten dollars a month follow us on instagram twitter or facebook